if the bomb drops, this is what your house would look like if you're lucky. This rescue operation is carried out by the Dublin City Rescue Service. And these are certainly dedicated people who do all their training in their spare time. Mr. Fay, you're director of civil defence. Could you tell us what is civil defence all about? Well, uh, civil defence uh, means the efforts being made to organise the population to protect themselves against the effects of uh, war, including particularly a nuclear war. Now, in the organisation of civil defence, uh, we have to ha have certain planning assumptions. Uh, in our case, the government has decided that these planning assumptions should be put in a particular order, and they have put the hazard of radioactive fallout, irrespective of the source from which it may emanate, as our number one threat. We also uh, plan on the assumption that uh, nuclear explosions may occur anywhere throughout this country and uh, we uh, uh, accept, uh, accept the fact that the warning period will be very, very short and that consequently we must be ready to go into action at very short notice. The, uh, uh, the, uh, these planning assumptions have led, led us to the present development in civil defence including the establishment of this uh, civil defence school here and uh, the activities carried on in the school here uh, will be uh, outlined to you uh, by uh, some of the members of the staff of the school. Can anyone come along to the school here? Any, anybody at all? Uh, anybody uh, can come along to the school uh, they're welcome to come to the school uh, to kind of see what is here, but uh, the ordinarily uh, the classes must be organised, and generally people are sent forward by the local authorities, through whom I should incidentally have mentioned, civil defence is mainly uh, 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 the the responsibility uh, for uh, the organisation, and. Uh, these people are sent forward uh, by the local authority uh, 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 con uh, concerned. Uh, we also, of course, conduct courses here for instructors, uh, for the Garda Síochána and the Army, and for other interested people like water engineers, uh, or agricultural inspectors, and uh, people of that kind. Thanks very much, Mr. Thank Fair. you, Ms. And now we'll see how civil defence operates throughout the country. And here to tell us is the chief technical officer at the school, Mr. Aubrey Crawford. Yes, How do you do, Mr. <coughs> Crawford? Well, now, the country, first of all, is divided into eight regions. In the south, we have numbers one and two. Then in the west, numbers three four and five, and in the east, number six, seven, and eight. Now, each of these regions is made up of a number of counties, usually uh, three or four. Uh, <coughs> the counties, then, are subdivided into sub-counties, and each sub-county, then, is divided into districts again subdivided into warden post areas. Now, in each of these areas, there are control posts. For example, in the warden post area of a warden post, a district level of district post, uh, sub-county, sub-county uh, control, and then for the county, uh, there would be a county control. 
So you have a chain of command and control running right up so that all, when fully developed, all parts of the country should be covered by this warden network. And now perhaps we could have a look at some of the equipment that these people use in their training. Uh, yes, certainly. Well, going back to the wardens, uh, the main uh, equipment that they would use are these radioactive instruments for the reporting of radioactivity from fallout. We have some of them here. And Mr. Ma... Uh, is a technical officer, and he'll explain the different types of instruments to you. Right, well, these are the range of radiac instruments which are used uh, uh, more particularly by the wardens. Uh, this instrument here is the individual dosimeter, and it measures the amount of radiation that uh, the wearer would receive in an area of radioactive fallout. It's something like a big fountain pen, isn't it? Just what, what it looks like. He wears it on his... He wears it on his, on his clothes, somewhat like that. And by holding it up to the light, we can see immediately how much uh, radiation he has received and right. when it is safe for him to stay in an area or when he must leave. This instrument here is the survey meter, which uh, would again be used extensively by the wardens. It uh, measures the intensity of radiation in a particular area. And um, that information is sent to county control uh, where the controller uh, processes it and uh, or, uh, originates a, a scheme of public control. And how about this one here? That is another uh, survey meter, slightly more elaborate, which uh, would have more specialist use. What's this instrument here for, Mr. Moore? This is a contamination meter. It's very much more sensitive than the others and is used for detecting the presence of radioactive material on people or on equipment. Is this measurement of radiation very important? Very important. Uh, if people are exposed to too much radiation, it would kill them. And these instruments can tell exactly how much radiation is knocking around. And the wardens can tell them when it's safe to come out and... They can, yes. ...how long more they have to stay in. That's true, yes. And now we'll have a look at the other equipment used by the welfare people. And here we see what happens when the gas and the electricity is all gone. Mr. Dunn, you're the technical officer in charge of this. What is this here? Is it an oven? Um, this is one of the pieces of improvised equipment which the welfare people will use. Uh, as you know, the welfare have to provide creature comforts, and the cooking of food is one of the big problems. This one is a double dustbin oven, mainly for the cooking of bread. Next on my left is a double dustbin oven, mainly for the cooking of meat. Beyond that, a single dustbin oven. Beyond that again, a stockpot boiler, mainly for the making of stews. And beyond that, a series of basic, cook basic cookers for uh, boiling of pots. And all these are made out of debris lying around after a blast? Yes, they're all made from debris. And we're not restricted to bricks. We can make them from... Uh, tins of clay, and even in extreme cases, from sods cut from the ground. And have you found that these ovens work efficiently? They're very efficient, but I should like you to have a look at the mobile feeding unit, which is desi designed to take the first impact of the feeding problem. Right. Dan, how many people can you look after with one of these mobile feeding units? Uh, these mobile feeding units are designed to feed 2,000 people every four hours. The kitchen or stores vehicle has the uh, equipment for cooking that number of meals. These canteen vehicles are equipped with insulated containers which will keep the food hot for four hours so that service can be made uh, within 30 miles of the kitchen and still keep to the four-hour cycle. And there we must leave the Civil Defence School and its work. If there is a nuclear war, you may not know what to do, I may not know what to do, but at least it's good to know that in this country there are people who can tell us. <laughs>